Hey everyone, it's Jessie. I hope you're all doing well. So we got back not long ago from South Carolina. The trip went really well. We were able to see our son who graduated from part of the schooling of the Navy. And it was just wonderful to see the area and to see his new apartment that he got. It was just very nice. In a way, it was also bittersweet because my husband's father was not doing well. And unfortunately, not long after coming back home, his father had passed away. So it's also been some tough times. I, I had written that in a community post to everyone. So thank you so much for the kind words and the prayers and the thoughts. He was a wonderful man that always thought of others and he was always praying for everyone and now he is no longer in pain. So before I had left for South Carolina, I had mentioned I was working on a project using my scrap yarn and it was a basket. Um, my cats, I have two cats. They usually have their toys all over the room and so I wanted to make a basket for their toys. I previously had made a basket for their toys but it was too big and the sides were too flimsy so I decided to make a different basket. I did in fact get the basket done before we went to South Carolina so that was nice. Um, I'll show you the basket here. This is without the toys. I took the toys back out but this is the basket. There's the inside. That's how it turned out. I like this. Oh, I don't have my other basket on hand, but I can like the previous video where I showed the previous basket. Um, so that way you can see the difference. So I find this one is so much better for cat toys because it's much shorter. The other one was probably this tall and it's also sturdier. So I, I can't quite remember how many strands of yarn I used or the hook size. I think I used five strands of yarn together. But again, if you want to check the previous video, out, I have all that information in there. And here is what it looks like with all the kitty toys in there. Well, I think they still have a few out on the floor. I think it's just the perfect size for their cat toys. And I absolutely love it. It's so cute. I'm just hoping the cats don't attack the basket too much and try to pull yarn out of it. We'll see how that works. So in the video where I did share the scrap basket I was making, I also asked if any of you had any ideas of what my next project could be or anything that you're working on that you are liking. One of you had mentioned that you were working on the butterfly effect shawl by Crystal at Bag All Day. So I decided to go check out her tutorial on that and decided to make that my next project. It is definitely a beautiful shawl. I started on the shawl prior to leaving for South Carolina. Now the yarn that I decided to use is some yarn that I received a while back in a, I believe it was a Hirschner's Mill Ends. Yes, that's what it was. I can link that video here if you haven't seen that, but this is the yarn. I had it on my shelf there for a little bit too, but I absolutely love this yarn. It is such a beautiful yarn. The inside, it's like a darker pink and then it just gets lighter and lighter and then it goes into a darker gray and it's just gorgeous. So the, this is the little thing that came with the mill ends. So it is a fine two sport weight yarn and I don't know exactly what it is. So it has here listed different things that it could be since it came in the mill ends. Um, it's possible it's 100% cotton. It does not have any metallic in it so it's not anything with metallic. It's either 100% cotton or it's 55% cotton slash 45% acrylic. 
It is 875 yards and it's 800 meters. Machine wash, lay flat to dry. So this yarn is just the perfect yarn for this shawl. I was hoping to find a pattern with different stitches. And just because sometimes I get bored doing the same stitch over and over, there's times where I do want the same stitch where I don't have to think too much. But this pattern is really not so hard. And it has three, yes, it has the single crochet, double crochet, and the triple crochet. It's really easy once you get the hang of it, and I love it so much. So this is what I have done so far. Those colors. I absolutely love those colors. Now, if you look closely, there's one side here. It might be hard to tell on the camera, but there's a little bit of texture. So the rolls that have the triple crochet kind of leave a little bump across so it gives it a little bit of texture and I really love that it's just beautiful it's just really hard to see on the camera but here's the little bumps and it's kind of every other roll like that just gorgeous you guys oh my I'm really loving it and it might take me a while it takes a little time I am using a five millimeter crochet hook and I believe that's what she what Crystal's using in her tutorial. I'm going to leave the video for this tutorial in the description below so if you want to check it out I would highly suggest it. It's a beautiful shawl and it's working up so nicely. Now you may have seen some of my previous videos where I was talking about a, a different shawl I was going to make and this one is not crochet it is a knit shawl. It is called the Gradient Sea Shawl by Shandy over at Expression Fiber Arts. Now I did do a little test swatch but I haven't actually started the shawl yet. I know surprising right? No really it's because there was so much to do before our trip to South Carolina and then other things happening there's just been so much going on but I did take some time to finally wind up some of the yarn oh and I want to mention in my one of my previous videos I had talked about when I was learning how to hand wind yarn into a ball I had seen one of Shandy's videos expression fiber arts on how to do that with a cardboard paper toilet or toilet paper roll and I was wrong. I made a mistake. So I actually learned from her video how to hand wind yarn by using your thumb. You hold a piece of string on your thumb and then you keep winding it around. Now the toilet paper roll is where I, I learned this from Fiber Flux. So I'm going to link both those videos down below if you want to check it out. But I used a toilet paper roll. I did do a little short on how I did that, but and, and I'm going to also insert a little clip in here so you can see that.
check out the fiber flux video that I link below if you want to use it this way. She explains it really well. And Shandy explains it really well how to use your thumb, but she also shows you how to use the, oh my gosh, you guys, I'm forgetting the name of it again. Well, the ball winder and the, why do I forget these things? The thing, the, the thing that you place the yarn around, why am I forgetting? Anyway, she does very well at explaining how to do that. So if you're interested, check it out. So their yarn comes in hanks like this. And so then you have to unwind it and put it into a ball. Otherwise, if you start your project without putting it into a ball, you are going to have a complete tangle mess or it's very likely that you will. And you don't want that because this can be very hard to untangle. I wound both of these up. You do have to have patience because it can take a while, but I enjoy it. It really relaxes me. It just helps me unwind and I really love it. I still have this one to do. So one left to wind up before I start the knit shawl, which should be soon, but I'm going to have probably a few <laughs> different projects. Well, at least these two, but there's another project I'll talk about in a little bit that I am thinking of starting. So these colors though, I mean, they looked beautiful when they were wound up in the hank, but once I put it into a ball, I, st I don't know. I don't know. It just seems more beautiful. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but the colors, I absolutely love these colors together. I find it's going to be so pretty as long as I don't make a bunch of mistakes, but I'm learning. If I remember, I'll try to link the video where I talked about the gradient seashawl and went on the Expression Fiber website and just kind of explained a little bit about their website and showed you what shawl that looked like. I'm also going to link below the video over Expression Fiber Arts on the gradient seashawl. So if you want to check that out, it's a really wonderful video. So now there is another project that I am considering. Crystal at Bag o Day, uh, I'm sure many of you watch her. She is talking about doing a shawl kale. And if you're not sure what kale means, it is a crochet along. So she wants to do a shawl crochet along. And it's doing a shawl where she has multiple beautiful stitches. If you didn't see it, she has, she made this beautiful beautiful shawl that she's not going to do a tutorial on and it's just gorgeous for an auction that she's going to be do coming out to help the i believe it's an animal rescue or an animal shelter and so if you want to check it out head over to her channel so she must have had a lot of people inquiring about that shawl and so she decided that she would do a shawl crochet along if there's enough people interested and it sounds like she's going to do it so I'm pretty excited I am thinking about jumping on a board she is using expression of fiber arts yarn not this kind she has a video a recent video where she goes over all the yarns that she was thinking or considering using for the shawl I can link that also below if you want to check it out I think she might have decided in that video which one she was going to use. I can't remember which yarn it was. It is Expression Fiber Arts, but I can't remember. I think it's a DK she decided to that she might be using. She might not be 100% yet. But anyway, check out that video. I am pretty excited about it. I don't know if I will be purchasing any more Expression Fiber Arts yarn for this. Um, their yarn is absolutely gorgeous, but it can be quite spendy. So I am thinking of just trying to find something else that will work. That's not as costly. So I will let you know once I figure that out. Also, I have a question for you guys. I am, as I mentioned earlier in the year, thinking of once in a while taking a trip to some of the yarn stores to kind of show the yarn and talk about yarn or I'm not quite sure how it's going to go yet because I have to get out of my comfort zone too. And so I have a Hobby Lobby near me, a Michaels near me and a Joann's near me. 
There is Hirschner's, but that is about two hours away from me. I am planning to do a trip to Hirschner's, or at least I'm hoping to be able to make that trip sometime, I think, when the weather starts warming up. So, but my question to you guys is, for, I'm going to want to make probably trips to all three stores, but which one would you like me to go to first? Would it be Hobby Lobby? Michael's, Joanne's, and also, is there a specific yarn that you want to see there? Is any is there anything you want me to take video of to look over? Um, just let me know. I am very curious to know what you guys would like. I may also put that in the community post, put a little poll to see what everybody would like to see. And I am looking into doing a giveaway soon. Once I figure out what's going to go in the giveaway. We're going to have a giveaway. I think it's about time. Thank you all for joining me today. I will see you in the next one. Take care.